Hey, welcome back to our stupid reaction units of Corbin. That was only that was fall. Owner of a Lonely Heart by Yes. Go ahead. That's a band you never hear of now, though. Yeah, it's true. I love wonder? Yes. No, <laughs> no, heck no. Great okay. band. I can't think of another song they did, but I'm sure. Really? <gasps> Off the top of my head, I can't think of it. Oh my stars! What else? It song? can happen to you. It can happen to me. Oh, okay. It can yeah. happen to me. And uh, follow yeah. us on Instagram and Twitter. Sure. It's so Content. juicy. Uh, belt. That's the juice. Dripping. Today we're reacting to, uh, this is called, uh, 11 Proofs. India is not like any other country. Ah, yes. Is that like a proofing of like, uh, what, what proofs? Uh, well, you said 11. Dough? Does you, dough proof? I don't know, but you said 11 proof and I thought that's a really, really weak liquor. <laughs> <laughs> get that liquor out of here. Yeah. I'm gonna get out of bed for less than a hundred. That's right. Uh, so proofs, proofs, evidences. I know, but it's a weird. Actualities. I know, it's a weird way. Yeah. It should, 11, 11 is strange, 11 proofs. And why 11, why not 10? They must like Spinal Tap. Why would Spinal Tap? Turn it up to 11. I've never seen that one. Re oh, really? Yeah, that's one of the big things about this amp is better than all the other amps. All the other amps out there, they go up to 10. Our amp goes up to 11. Okay, here we go. I'm sure it's great. <laughs> Hey everybody. Hi! A simple question for you. Okay. Yeah, who doesn't love traveling? Uh, I uh, love traveling. I sure do. Me too. And I've been to a lot of different countries. Oh, us too. There's one that will stick with me forever. Well, we've been there as well. Like I said, I'm pretty well traveled. I like to go abroad at least once a year. So I've Not got a lot year. of trips <laughs> under my belt. But when a friend told me that I just have to see India, well, that's exactly what I did. That's accurate. I went in September. The last month of the summer monsoon. It was pretty dry and sunny, but with short rains here and there. The perfect weather for a traveler, if you ask me. Being the confident and well experienced globetrotter that I am, I went there prepared, and I thought I was ready for anything. Boy, was I wrong. The colors, the contrasts, the pace, the people, everything hit me like a ton of bricks. And then he got and Delhi didn't let go even when I was already back home. That's right. You take it home as with you. As soon as I stepped out of the airport, I felt dizzy. It could have been the heat, the jet lag, or the hunger in my belly. I assumed it was the latter. So I decided to head out for some authentic Indian food as soon as I throw my bags in my hotel room. Now, the food there deserves a big shout out. Well, First duh. Of, Indians eat very little meat. In fact, they have the lowest meat consumption per person in the world. Most of their dishes Dang. are vegetarian, and meat is replaced with well, soy meat. It this depends on where you are. Depends on where you are. Eighty yeah. percent of the population is Hindu. Probably like you, I've always heard that Hinduism requires a strictly vegetarian diet, but that's not the case. It's just because they believe not eating meat minimizes the hurt they bring to other living beings. That's definitely one of the things I learned You're during my travels, and I was pleasantly surprised. Another thing about food in India is that it's all heavily spiced. That comes as no surprise, really, since yep. India is well known across the world as the biggest spice producer and exporter. But there's one region that stands out exclusively in this regard, the state of Kashmir. Kashmir. It's home <laughs> to the most valuable spice ever, saffron. Sure, this flower it's isn't unique fancy. to India. It also grows in Iran and Spain. Kashmir, Iran. however, produces the Iran. highest quality and the most expensive saffron in the world. The town of Pampur is literally built around saffron fields. Wow. There are actually three varieties cultivated there. I didn't know it came there. from uh, There's Kashmir. Mangra, the most expensive one, that costs about $1,600 a pound. Then you've got Lacha, which, That's interestingly enough, is less pricey at $1,000 per pound. Nice. Yet saffron farmers say it's the purest. And finally, there's Zarda. It's the cheapest, but only compared to other varieties, because $250 a pound isn't exactly what I call cheap. Anyway. 
India Spice wow, Game is definitely on point. That's about that big. Saffron? So, I found a good place to eat, and as soon as I saw the menu, I remembered that Indian is also famous for its large variety of teas, or as the locals call it, chai. You should see the sheer number of options. I never thought there could be that many types of tea. If you're Especially a tea drinker, Bengal, right? I'm yeah, sure you know Darjeeling and Assam. But have you ever heard of Karnataka or Kangra? Mm. Does Munar ring a bell? Yeah, I don't it blame. does. I had no idea that these kinds exist either, and those are just the tea producing regions. There's even more once you get into the types of chai by adding particular spices and herbs. Take, for example, masala chai, which is made with cinnamon, ginger, cloves, and herbs. I personally fell in love with butter tea. It's so thick and creamy. Mm, I could drink it by the gallon. Basically, you take tea leaves, some butter, hot water, and salt. Mix it all up and thank me later. Never heard of that. Me neither. With a full belly and plenty of chai pumping through my veins, I was ready for some sightseeing. I landed in New Delhi. Hey, so I spent the rest of the day walking around and taking in all the sights. Whenever I go abroad, I like to carry a little phrase book in the local language. Well, if you ever find yourself in India, Mara you're going to need a really <laughs> big book because there are actually 22 officially recognized languages there. English is among them. So I was well, okay just sticking to that. Hundreds those of 22 languages. official languages are just to drop in the huge linguistic ocean of the country. By different accounts, there are from 122 to 300 major languages spoken in India, as well as up to 1,600 lesser known ones. Plus dialects. Basically, if you travel from one town to another, you'll hear people talking a different language. And if you happen to go <coughs> to another state, you can forget everything you might have learned in your previous location. How they manage to communicate with each other is still beyond me. New Delhi was awesome. I wish I could talk more about it, but I have a lot to see. I did find time to take a train up to Amritsar and see the Golden Temple. We took uh, a plane. How do I even begin to describe it? The whole thing is covered in gold. And oh, we've been there. We know. A huge pool of water. This is where the tradition of langur takes place. Langur is a vegetarian meal that's given to any and everyone who comes to the to temple, regardless of their and background or too. beliefs. It was very Just good. imagine, the Golden Temple provides a free meal to over 50,000 people a day. And on special occasions, it can feed up to 200,000. I got a free meal too, and it was really delicious. You can volunteer there as well. I did just that because I was in so much awe about the place, I didn't want to leave. That would've been cool to volunteer. What I actually yeah, regret yeah. is that I didn't get to see the Kumbh Mela in action. It's one of the greatest celebrations of India, and apparently it's a sight to behold. In what? 2011, so many pilgrims gathered in one place that the whole congregation oh, the of 75 million people was even visible from space. What? This year, really? it's taking place from January until early March. So if you've seen it with your own eyes, just know that I'm so jealous. In fact, whatever India does, it does it on a huge scale. Yeah, For example, it has the largest number of post offices in the world. Wherever you go, you you'll stumble upon one literally on every corner. That's the not a irony post office. of this is that it doesn't really help the situation with delivery times. One Indian guy told me it's totally normal to wait for your package to be delivered in two weeks' time, even if it was sent from a nearby town. But hey, patience is a virtue. Do not have Amazon Prime? <laughs> but it doesn't stop there. India places third in terms of the number of Guinness World Record holders, Whoa. the world's fastest nose typer, the most expensive wedding ever held, and the most that selfies taken together are just a few of the bizarre world records held in this country. Record. Records? Where's he from? What I'm else? Not sure. The largest railroad network in the world? Check. Yeah. Well, almost, since the United States does technically have more. But anyway, India has built over 3.5 million miles of railroads, I guess because we're just... which, considering the smaller size of the country, still then means we're not easier transit within sure. and between well. different locations. With that in mind, it shouldn't really be a huge surprise that like Indian five Railways white is also I don't know the largest like employer in the world. It has over a million employees, and considering the country's extensive railway network, these people are scattered throughout India, from the smallest villages to the biggest cities. The number of jobs grows every year, so it looks like you could always get a job there if you're looking for employment in India. Anyway, what can I say about my final impressions? I was blown away and I seriously didn't want to leave this fascinating place. Visiting it was like going to a whole new world for me. I tried to get as many souvenirs as I could, souvenirs? but I almost forgot Where one important from? thing. 
If you ever go there, by the way, you'd better remember it too. No one is allowed to take India's national currency in or out of the country. <laughs> it's actually against the law. So make sure you change your mind. I'm a felon! The <laughs> I've I broken the law. <laughs> but a friendly local told me to exchange my rupees at the airport. And off I went. Headed back home with my suitcase full of exotic stuff and my head pulsing with impressions. <laughs> It already became. It already did. Yeah, I knew that. We knew that one. Can you tell me anything else about India? That Another one. They invented the number zero. So leave me some recommendations down in the. And they know how to wipe their butts better than Americans. <laughs> these videos show me. If I knew how to do animation, we could make so many of these videos. <laughs> yeah, we could now because we know we've been like immersed in it. But you know, I I like the information, but I much prefer these kinds of things that are done as a more just genuine look in the camera. Here's my trip to India. Yeah. You know? Yeah, as opposed to Versus the... a stylized production yeah. kind of a thing. Yeah. And, yeah. I, uh... Well, I didn't do it on purpose, but I did break the rules. I, I have in my wallet, I still have this. How much is that? I got a thousand rupees. Oh, yeah, how much is that? A thousand rupees is like ten bucks. Oh, okay. Yeah. Eleven yeah. bucks. Yeah, because... Eight bucks. I tried... Twelve bucks. When I got to the airport, they said... Uh, nope. <laughs> Whatever I had on my person uh, wasn't enough, so I just handed a wad of cash to Indrani. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah, they weren't going to exchange it because it wasn't a, but a then high enough amount. I found, I, I don't remember how much it was, but I found money in my suitcase yeah, later I on. Was, I was upset because I, every time I've gone there, any money I have left over, I've left with Indrani. Yeah. And then I checked my wallet as I was in the next airport and saw I had a thousand rupees in there. I'm like, what? Flying crap! Went, okay, I'll use it now. It's there for my next trip. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we're felons. Yep. So uh, reports to the authorities. Yep. But you know, we're lawbreakers. Sorry about that. Not uh, really. Nope. It's a dumb rule. We'd do it again. I could take your money if I want. Yeah, we're gonna take your money out again. Why is that rule a rule? I don't know. Interesting. Well. It may have to do with the cost to print money. Print it? Yeah. Hmm. And I don't know what the rules and regulations are there compared to like us. Ever since we left the gold standard, we're just like, hey, let's print some more money. <laughs> <laughs> well, money is basically made up. And when it was taken off the gold standard, that's for sure. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a made up thing. Yeah. Especially in America. We're $27 trillion in debt. Yeah. We're never paying that. I was going to say, <laughs> our money is simply little notes that say, yeah, we owe China that much. Well, sorry, you're never getting that back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's amazing is we had the budget balanced under President Clinton. Yeah. So everything that's happened with this has been since him. Yeah, everything. <sighs> well, technically, if you just shave off, you know, $27 trillion from the military budget, you could pay it, but... Yeah, well, why not? Well, they can't survive off of $600 billion. I know. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, these videos, they're fun, but yeah, it does make, like, one, also, I think if we were active this at the beginning, we would have been like, oh, that's cool. That's we would cool. have had a lot more. We it's like, like it's, oh, I didn't now know it's like, yeah, I knew that. Yeah, I, I not only knew that, I've been there. <laughs> yeah, we've been to multiple places. It's he really talked fun, about. I know. Uh, and hopefully, we'll be able to go multiple times more, and we get to know a lot more stuff. True. Because we're very intelligent, smart-like. Yep. And just because we've been someplace once means we're experts. That's true. Yep. Want to we'll tell you everything you want to know about India now. <laughs> we know everything. <laughs> White people. <laughs> <laughs> Look, <laughs> <laughs>